Chapter 126 Chang Hanyue felt that he could not wait any longer, dragging this out any further would only disadvantage and kill himself. One of them had their fill of food and water, while the other is hungry and weak. The one who dies will definitely be the weak one. It wasn't a matter of whether or not he wanted to make the first move. If he didn't make any move, he was just waiting for his death. Even though Lu Xu's sword gave him fear and doubt, Chang Hanyue couldn't care anymore. He inched closer to Lu Xu as Lu Xu looked calmly at him, what was impending was finally here. Lu Xu didn't want to kill, but in this path of training and cultivation, it was inevitable to chance upon bloody and cruel situations. He, as a practitioner, had to have the nerve to go past all these obstacles. Chang Hengyue's body darted forward, and Lu Xu braced himself while awaiting his opponent's first move. He watched as Chang Hengyue's dagger slid out from his sleeve to his hand smoothly, and he sped towards Lu Xu. As he came to Lu Xu, he turned and pivoted on his foot to evade Lu Xu's sword. He then erupted explosively again, his dagger in his hand like a venomous snake, taking advantage of Lu Xu who was still in the middle of a move. He wanted to take Lu Xu out with a fatal blow to his vital part. At this moment, Lu Xu held his breath. What was it like to die? People die like how flames extinguish. There would probably be nothing after death. Sometimes, Lu Xu thought of death as not being able to wake up after sleeping. Death was like borderless darkness and silence, never being able to be rescued. Sometimes he would be quite terrified of it as well. Which was why he wanted to live on. At that instant, Lu Xu's corpse dog within the celestial map of his chest let out a deafening roar as if it had been suppressed for a long time. It burst out of his chest and pierced through Cheng Hengyue's heart, bringing with it a huge sputter of blood. Lu Xu never thought that he should show any mercy in a battle of life and death. It would be too much of a pity if he was killed even before showing his trump card. He was merely someone who tried his best to keep on living in this world. So from that moment, Lu Xu tried his best and used his trump card. He managed to evade Chang Hengyue's quick strike towards his throat and unleash his sword. Corpse Dog was his ultimate move. This sword was quick as lightning and it pierced through Chang Hengyue's vital organs in an instant, taking out his vitality. At the same time, there was a strange power which destroyed all of Chang Hengyue's emotions, just like a soul losing all of his ability to feel. Class C, Chang Hengyue fell flat onto the floor as blood continued flowing out from him relentlessly. He knew his death was imminent. No one could live through a pierced heart, not even a practitioner. But he didn't quite understand. This Dao Yuan student who seemed crazy, why was he class C? He must have got it wrong, this guy wasn't a student. He must be an expert within the ranks of the heavenly network. Everything eventually belonged to darkness and silence, this was death. Lu Xu received 1,000 distress points from Chang Hengyue just before he died and stared at the mountains and ravines far away, unable to speak or make a sound. So this was how it felt like after killing someone. Lu Xu's life was once like a tragic movie. An orphan who was forced to leave the orphanage and ended up in the streets. It then became a motivational comedy, bringing Lu Xiaoyu around to earn money and looking forward to life in future. But now it had turned into a horrific, high-adrenaline action movie. His carefree life had stopped abruptly here. He had killed someone. It really is a cruel world, Lu Xu muttered as he grasped onto his rusty sword and sat on the slope of the hill. He looked at the vicious afternoon sun shining relentlessly on the great earth. He looked at the evening orange glow of the descending sun. The rays of the sun dyed the entire world golden yellow. He looked at the blood-red moon, the night was like an abyss. He seemed to be the only person in this world. Time seemed to pass very quickly and he sat at the same spot not long before tomorrow came. As the morning sun rose into the sky again, the cheerful rays seemed to signify the birth of new life and opportunity again. Lu Xu stood up once again. He was still himself, just lonelier. If only Lu Xiaoyu was here. He had to continue moving forward. He had spent too much time on this spy. 
since he was here in the remains, he should make the best out of this place and make it out of here with at least more than one sword. Lu Xu wondered if anyone else had any sort of reward, or if anyone was still alive. This ancient remain was like a huge system on its own. Since he came here, he had run more than a hundred kilometers, but he could still not see the border. He continued moving in the initial direction. He didn't have any other plan in this place and his only hope was to keep walking until he could see something different. He had walked for a day and had seen countless corpses of students and soldiers. He even saw corpses belonging to members of the Heavenly Network and pass by rivers to rehydrate. There was a huge vulture following him in the sky. It only flew away after a long time, as if it was rather regretful that Lu Xu was still alive after so long yet it did not dare to initiate an attack on him. Finally, Lu Xu saw a green mountain. This green mountain breathed a new life into this gloomy yellow world and it really provided Lu Xu with much elation. As he neared the green mountain, he actually saw rabbits and squirrels. So this ancient remain had normal animals. But the animals here seemed extremely smart, running back into the mysterious woods on the first sight of Lu Xu. They even snuck out to sneak a peek at Lu Xu, their eyes filled with character. Lu Xu looked up. There were actually fruits hanging from the trees, fruits that looked just like apples. He looked again and noticed there were some leftover fruits on the floor eaten by other animals. It seemed like they were edible. Oh my, having eaten stinky tofu for two whole days, this was really a steal. Lu Xu wanted to pick the fruits immediately, but as the squirrels looked at Lu Xu picking their fruits, they threw some pebbles at Lu Xu, growling and running towards Lu Xu after finishing their pebbles, with rage written all over their faces. From the little squirrel's distress, plus one. From. Damn, you guys. This squirrels actually had their own mind and soul, and could actually contribute distress points, can you believe that? The pebbles weren't thrown with much strength, so Lu Xu continued picking the fruits and bolted once he was done. As he ran, he spouted, let me tell you, I'm not afraid of you. I'll be back once I'm done with the fruits. He had declined into, a state of fighting with little squirrels for fruits. It was really heartaching to think of his plight. A group of little squirrels stood at the edge of the forest wailing and growling at Lu Xu in anger. Lu Xu suddenly felt like a bad guy who had stolen a child's candy. Eh, since the magical energy here caused the animals to be more intellectual, if the magical energy outside continued increasing, wouldn't all animals on earth be smart and have their own opinions in future? Or was it to say this had already existed? Chapter 127 what would happen if all the animals on earth started becoming smart? Lu Xu wasn't too sure. But seeing the situation in this ancient remain, it wasn't too serious. After all, although these animals were beginning to be more intellectual, their physique did not change much. If it stayed like this, Lu Xu didn't have much to worry about. Speaking of which would these animals become stronger under such magical circumstances? But just as Lu Xu turned to run, a pebble whizzed towards him. He dodged instinctively, after all this sort of small maneuver was peanuts for him. A rock as big as his face went past his body, causing a cloud of dust to rise as it smashed against the floor. Lu Xu turned around to look at the woods, not knowing which squirrel was responsible for that amid the numerous squirrels. It wasn't that the strength of that rock was extremely big or that it could threaten him, but Lu Xu felt that it wasn't the strength that an ordinary squirrel ought to possess. Could it be that animals became stronger as well? He couldn't care more, he just wanted to leave after picking the fruits. The yellow land outside was more open and Lu Xu could move about freely while easily observing his surroundings. While the woods had too many trees blocking his view, which might make it difficult for him to be prepared for any sudden event. Take that unusually strong squirrel for instance, who knew what other weird mutations this forest had concealed. Even if the relic or any other rare herbs were in the forest, Lu Xu wasn't willing to enter at all. His life was more precious, whoever else wanted to go was none of his business. He took out a fruit from his jacket as he ran. Luckily, it was early spring and he wore a jacket. 
Under the jacket was a long-sleeved t-shirt. If he didn't have his jacket, he would have to go topless and use his t-shirt to contain the fruits. He wiped the green fruit against his shirt and took a big bite. Instantly, a soothing sensation he had never felt before gushed through his mouth. It was like having a taste of a sweet, refreshing drink after being thirsty for two whole days. And this thirst represented the fatigue of the human body. Lu Xu was stunned momentarily. He never expected the fruit to be so amazing. Apart from curbing his hunger immediately, his body's fatigue seemed to have faded. This fruit of the ancient remains was indeed amazing. No wonder the squirrels tried to attack him. He undid his jacket to count the number of fruits, there was a grand total of more than thirty fruits. Perhaps in this ancient remains, he was the one who had to worry least about food. But he couldn't just have stinky tofu for food as well. Eating this delicious fruit in this situation was absolutely incredible. He rewrapped the fruits using his jacket carefully, fearing he might drop a few when moving around. Past experiences had caused Lu Xu to adopt a personality similar to a hamster. He would be extremely careful when storing everything that was useful. He treated his large bag of fruits carefully, just like protecting his hoard of treasure. He stuck to the border of the forest and continued advancing. The more he walked, the greater the awe he had for the large land surface of this ancient remain. It far exceeded any expectation he once had. Could this be a large continent? At this moment, Lu Xu saw some feces at the border of the forest. Judging from their size, they probably didn't belong to something as small as the squirrels. They probably belonged to something bigger like a husky. He heard light treading on the yellow soil behind him and turned around instantly. It was actually two huge wolves. The two wolves had ash-gray fur and looked extremely sturdy and muscular. With their gaze fixated on Lu Xu, they started advancing slowly. Animals like wolves were rather special. Take wild cows for example, they'd be gentler in a herd but they'll go into a rage when they were alone. Wolves, on the other hand, were wild in a pact, but extremely timid when alone. Lu Xu didn't understand wolves greatly as he had never encountered any in his life, but he sensed huge danger at this point in time. Thinking of the distress points he obtained from the squirrels, if these strangely muscular wolves had also become intellectual and had formed packs to hunt, he would really be in trouble. The two wolves strode towards him from two directions. Lu Xu didn't hesitate to swing his sword outwards, with speed so quick that the opposing party didn't have any chance to react. Under these circumstances, he sliced one of the wolves in two halves. But just as he was preparing to strike the other wolf, he noticed rustling sounds from the trees in the forest. Lu Xu looked over and was stunned. How many wolves were there? One, two hundred? Lu Xu was dead for sure. Lu Xu's income record kept increasing through distress from Lu Green Wolf. It was obvious that all these wolves had become intelligent. He didn't know why. Perhaps it was because they were animals, their distress points were capped at a maximum of one point. But even so, he had a few hundred points every few minutes. If he dragged on, he could probably light up his fifth star today. But he dared not drag any further. Lu Xu had engaged this pack of wolves. The wolves were observing this human, as if pondering over his killing of the first wolf. They were thinking of a way to kill this human, or they were awaiting the instructions of their leader. As Lu Xu raised his sword towards the pack, the wolves were rather surprised. Could this human have a mass-killing ultimate technique? Instead, Lu Xu turned around and started running frantically with his fruits. The wolves stood rooted for a whole second in confusion. Although they had become intellectual creatures, it was still at a beginning stage and they couldn't understand the link between the two actions of the human. Meanwhile, Lu Xu received some distress points from the wolves. He ran with the pack of wolves hot on his heels. Lu Xu dared not stop, there were too many traps and weird occurrences in this remain. As he passed by the place where he picked the fruits, that group of squirrels actually recognized him. Oh, isn't this the person who stole our fruits? How dare he return? 
With that, they started throwing rocks towards him. Lu Xu was in dire trouble. Not only was he being chased by wolves, he was being attacked by the squirrels as well. They were lucky he didn't have the time or capacity to entertain them. The next time he comes back, he would steal all their fruits. He still wanted to advance forward initially, to see if he could maybe discover any new mysteries. What if he could find the relic? Instead, he was in trouble now. Not only could he not move forward anymore, he was being chased by a pack of wolves. The only thing he could rejoice about was the fact that the wolves weren't as quick as him. He was suddenly thankful and thought that speed was the greatest ability of a strength-type metahuman. And he possessed the wonderful abilities to of a strength-type metahuman. Chapter 128 While Lu Xu was escaping, he thought in this remain. You could not just go wherever you wanted but it was necessary to research and think about the places you could and couldn't go. During his encounter with the green wolves, he saw that the land in a distant was covered in mist, similar to when the remains first opened. Thinking about it, that must be the border of the remains. No matter how much Lu Xu didn't wish to face the truth, he had to admit he was running the wrong direction and reached the borders. It was obvious that the good stuff was at the heart of the remains. He started to sprint at full speed towards the direction he came from, passing by the location of his and Chang Hengyue's battle. There was a group of vultures feeding on him. Lu Xu suppressed his emotions, he did not want to end up like Chang Hengyue. Lu Xu felt that he needed to live, to go back to Lu Xiaoyi. He had a sudden desire to turn around and try to escape from the border. But he also knew that, according to what Jiang Shui told him about remains, no one would be able to escape until someone obtained the relic. And so he gave up on that thought. There was no reason to doubt the many experiences of others entering and exiting remains. And so what if he could escape, his life inside the remains was still better off than most of the others. Although, right now, his clothes were ragged and his face was covered in dust. He was almost unrecognizable. There were even holes in the soles of his shoes. Lu Xu felt a slight sting for what had happened to this pair of 40 over dollars sports shoes. At least he did not encounter any life-threatening incident yet and he wanted to continue seeing just how magical this remain was. Someone once asked, what exactly is courage? Another person replied, to not look back. Thinking this way was being ignorant. Lu Xu felt that, not looking back refers to not thinking about your own past, how pathetic your life was or what were the choices you had. It meant that one shouldn't have thoughts about the difference in your life if you made a different decision back then. Directly facing the consequences of your own decision was a form of courage. The pack of wolves was slowly left behind and out of sight. Lu Xu had not been so pathetic for a long time. During his escape, Lu Xu had accidentally been scratched on his arm by a green wolf. At that moment, he thought that being injured in such a place wasn't beneficial and immediately bought a refresher fruit and ate it, hoping that he could rely on the refresher fruit's power to recover faster. But he was disappointed. Although the refresher fruit could heal any illnesses and even increase aptitude, it had no effect on external injuries. At least Lu Xu had a fast self-recovery and all he had to do was wait to be fully healed. He was sprinting frantically when he suddenly experienced something strange. It was similar to when he was practicing his sword play at Li Xianis. After thousands and thousands of swings, he would feel more natural and efficient at utilizing his full strength. At this moment, Lu Xu's strides had a rhythm. It felt like when he first saw Li Xianyi practicing his sword play, but Li Xianyi was still better. He suddenly remembered what Li Xianyi told him, that learning sword play from the basics was to train his vitality, to let him understand the body's latent abilities. Be it a swing or a stab, there was only one objective, to link and connect everything together. So if I continue sprinting like this, would that be training vitality? Slowly, the sole of his shoes had broken apart and was unusable. Lu Xu started running barefooted. As he ran, he suddenly developed a comfortable feeling while running. The more he ran, the more energized he felt. At this moment, 
Lu Xu's exceptional body capabilities had healed his wounds completely and his energy level was at its peak. Lu Xu felt like he was at the top of the world. In the evening of the second day, he could suddenly hear sounds of people talking behind a slope. It sounded like a dispute and Lu Xu was surprised, could there be people? After not meeting anyone alive for so many days, Lu Xu was feeling lonely. Human beings are social animals, and even if one doesn't rely on others, human beings' nature will lead them to places with people. He climbed up the slope and was shocked to see a group of weak and sick elderly, pregnant women, and children. Wait no, just weak and sick. To be more precise, it was a group of Daoyuan students in a more pathetic state than himself. His pathetic state was due to not bathing and having no clean clothes to change into, and even his shoes were gone. Although he did battle, it didn't affect him that much and his wounds were already healed. But this group of people, most of them were injured and Lu Xu could even see a few lying motionless on the ground. He suddenly noticed someone, who was holding an axe, familiar. These eight people looked like the ones he saved when he first entered. Wait no, two were different. Those two were Luo Cheng Daoyuan students. Lu Xu had the impression that he had seen them before and they were all in such a pathetic state now. After a mere three days period and it's already hard to look at them. Lu Xu never thought that his state of appearance could be better than anyone else. Honestly, Lu Xu had wondered if that group of people died. Or maybe they finally mustered up their courage to protect themselves. Or maybe found a safe location to hide. He never thought he would meet them again and was rather surprised. The group of people who were previously quarreling was shocked to notice another disheveled-looking person on the slope, who was also carrying a huge bag and a sword. Only after realizing that it was a person, they relaxed. Someone managed to recognize Lu Xu under his dirt-covered face and excitedly shouted, Isn't this that expert? Seems like it's really him. Someone else also recognized Lu Xu after the reminder. Lu Xu had left them a strong impression when they all just entered the remains. While everyone was trembling with fear, Lu Xu was already fighting calmly against the skeletons and even threw away that unusual-looking axe. In their hearts, Lu Xu was an amazing figure and many of them regretted not keeping Lu Xu with them. If not, the group of over ten people wouldn't have been reduced to eight. The male student carrying that axe remembered that the piece of land Lu Xu came from was where they were crushingly defeated. The seemingly endless land was filled with countless skeletons and they had just retreated from there. He asked tactfully, Expert, is it just you? In his mind, he thought that no matter how powerful Lu Xu was, he couldn't have made it across that piece of land. Even if he did, he couldn't be alone. Could he have met up with the heavenly network? Within the hearts of the students, their greatest savior would be the heavenly network. As Lu Xu didn't really like this group of people, he said laughingly, That's right, it's just one of me. I was afraid I'd scare you if I came as just half of me. From Zhao Yu's Distress, Plus 182 Chapter 129 Zhao Yu was confused. Did I ask him this? He sized up Lu Xu who was in front of him, noticing that although this expert looked dirty and rugged like his own people, he didn't have a single injury unlike them while his people were rife with injuries and scars. How strong must he be to accomplish that? Is he really a Dao Yuan student? Apart from a small number of tier A aptitude prodigies in Dao Yuan class who attained methods of training, after the Mysterious Senses chapter, the rest of the students were stuck at the mastery of the Mysterious Senses chapter. Everyone had the same thought arising from this, abilities and skills were not groceries and weren't given just when they were wanted. As for how those below tier A aptitude could obtain new skills, no one knew yet. So Zhao Yu's doubt and surprise were not without reason. If Lu Xu, as a Dao Yuan student, was able to wander about the remain unscathed, was he a tier of a prodigy? Class E practitioners would have at least gotten injured even if they didn't die from the waves of skeletons. Zhao Yu asked suddenly, Expert, are you of tier aptitude? Lu Xu didn't really want to hold this conversation. 
everyone already treated him as an expert of experts, how could he claim that he had tier F aptitude? The Luocheng Daoyuan student at the side already recognized Lu Xu early on, confused over Zhao Yu's question. He has tier F potential and he's just a class E strength type metahuman. Lu Xu stared at him. Ah, what a big mouth. If it wasn't for the arm wrestling incident, he wouldn't have recognized Lu Xu. In fact, Lu Xu was much more well known compared to tier B prodigies such as Jiang Shui. Why are you guys left with this few people? Lu Xu asked curiously. Zhao Yu fell silent and a decent looking girl suddenly said angrily, after you gave them the axe, they actually fought over it. While fighting, a skeleton appeared and chased us for our lives. Lu Xu was stunned. Previously, he had left them the axe as he felt it was quite effective and would be of great help to them. Instead, it caused them even more trouble. Indeed, only through hard times will a person's character be tested. Common friendships would be proven to be a lie during such a tough scenario. But Lu Xu didn't agree that man was inherently evil. Human nature depended on circumstances, weren't there good people such as Uncle Lee and the rest? Even if he was not to think of Uncle Lee, there were still people such as Li Xiani and the rest of the Golden Foundation who had ideals to uphold peace in the world. He didn't think highly of Zhao Yu and his group. Initially, he looked down on them for being cowardly and his disrespect for them was even greater now that they got into a fight over an axe. But how did Lu Xu know, in this terrifying environment, that Zhao Yu and his company assumed that it was that axe which made Lu Xu seem so inhumanely strong and capable? Only when they obtained the axe did they know that it was not the axe, but the wielder himself was powerful. But Lu Xu didn't vocalize his opinion of them. Instead, seeing that they looked weak and skinny, he asked out of curiosity, How many days have you guys not eaten? Three days, the decent-looking girl said gravely, we hid here in fear of going anywhere else after escaping those skeletons. Luckily, some of us were holding onto water bottles when we entered the remain or else we would have died of thirst here. We don't even have water now. As a fellow Daoyuan student, could you at least stay and protect us since you are so competent? You're funny, Lu Xu broke her sentence off. A train of thought developed in his mind as he heard her words, who are you? Who are you to question my values, no one had the audacity to talk about values here all right. Lu Xu hadn't even started criticizing them for fighting over the axe. Lu Xu planned on resting here for a night before setting off once more. Since these people had stayed here for two or three days, it should probably be quite safe. Although he had the energy and vitality to run for a long period, he couldn't possibly run forever. Lu Xu sat on an edge, not knowing what to say to these people as he didn't want to have too much to do with them. At night, he retrieved a green fruit from his back and took one sumptuous bite of it. Everyone around him noticed it. Having been hungry for three days, Zhao Yu and his group were going crazy seeing that Lu Xu had food. Before this, they were guessing what Lu Xu had in that bag of his. In contrast to their skinny and frail selves, Lu Xu was radiating with vitality and he was obviously well fed. It was now proven that Lu Xu really had food. Just the sight of him retrieving his food earned him an insane amount of distress points. He was just 10,000 distress points away from lighting up his fifth star. Lu Xu's eyes lit up, he could actually earn distress points from this. In reality, he didn't do it on purpose as he didn't want to share his food with this group of people. After thinking for a moment, he spoke, this fruit was picked on the way here. If you guys are fast enough, it will take about two days to get there, but be careful of wolves. Don't advance anymore after seeing the forest. He was willing to tell the group how to get the fruits but wasn't willing to give them any. How many days could his bag of fruits last so many of them? It wasn't just the issue of eating the fruit as he still wanted to bring some home for Lu Xiaoyu to taste. What a loser Lu Xu was, thinking of Lu Xiaoyu every time he tastes something delicious. But these words weren't well received by these students. Upon hearing they had to walk up to two days and the wolves, how could they go? They might not even dare to walk across the soil with skeletons. Everyone looked at each other. 
Evidently, Lu Xu wasn't willing to share his food with them. That decent-looking girl deliberated before going to Lu Xu's side pitifully, asking him, does it taste good? Lu Xu replied without thinking, it's not bad and it tastes like pear. But it's finer than pear, sweeter as well. It's really juicy and eating it feels like drinking a bottle of beverage. It's really rejuvenating. The girl swallowed her saliva which welled up in her mouth and listened in pain, why did you describe it in such detail? Now I'm even more hungry. From Lee Huey's distress, plus 555. At this stage of high school, boys and girls were still quite simple. They could only act pitiful and hint for food. Couldn't she maybe lower her collar or something? TSK Chapter 130 If only the students of Luo Chang's Daoyuan class did not mention that Lu Xu was a Class E strength type metahuman, and was always at the bottom of his class, Zhao Yu and his group's impression of him would be someone unfathomable. However, when they knew the truth, they started harboring some contempt towards him because of him having tier F aptitude. A class E strength type metahuman was not a someone to be ignored. But at least for now, such people weren't as mysterious anymore. Even if a class E strength type metahuman was strong, Xiao Yu and his group thought that he would be unable to defeat all eight of them. Even without the girl, there were seven of them. He couldn't possibly beat seven men, right? They had already forgotten how battered and exhausted they were when facing the skeletons while Lu Xu, on the other hand, was so powerful. He subconsciously thought to himself that he was facing mere humans now compared to those skeletons before, so it wouldn't be that scary as humans had the bottom line of morals and values. Hence it could be said that sometimes humans can be peculiar and weird, no one would dare to catch a non-venomous snake when instructed even though this would have been an easy task. However, he would still dare to fight with others till severely wounded, and that wouldn't be an issue at all as he thinks that he actually wouldn't be killed. Unfortunately, numerous people had lost their lives due to this fallacy and misconception. Furthermore, Zhao Yu felt that the fight wouldn't escalate at all. After all, Zhao Yu's group consisted of many men, and very few students in school ever dared to fight back while being constrained in the men's toilet by seven to eight other students. They merely wanted some food and hurting someone was never their intention. Zhao Yu exchanged glances his friends standing beside him and said, I think you should share some of your food with us. Lu Xu's raised his eyebrows, what a great way to use the word should. He then replied, let me share a story with you guys. Zhao Yu and his friends were confused, what story was there to tell now? Was he going to tell the story of the farmer and the snake? Mr. Dongguo and the wolf or the good people and the porcelain lady as a form of irony and revenge against them? However, if Chang Hengyue was still alive and present at this moment. Once there was a man who loved to travel, he accidentally stumbled upon an ancient remain and realized that carved on the walls were pictures of food. Steamed lamb cake, roasted duck, roasted chicken, roasted goose, braised pork, sesame chicken, roasted delights. Lu Xu momentarily forgot the rest, but managed to continue without much hesitation, fish floss, kung pao chicken, hairy crab, steamed fish. The people listening to the story were furious, wasn't he supposed to tell a story? How was this a story? From Zhao Yu's distress, plus 789. From a single wave of about 5,000 distress points came in and he was just 5,000 points away from lighting up his fifth star. When the group of starving people heard all those delicious dishes, it was like all those food rained down from the sky and all they needed to do was to reach out and grab them. They already braced themselves for Lu Xu's criticisms and curses but weren't expecting this. It didn't matter whether they were called snakes and wolves when it comes to food, but in the end, it's not like all those food mentioned will miraculously appear out of nowhere. After listening and thinking about all these dishes, their brains and eyes hurt from imagining all these food in front of them. At this moment, Lu Xu stood up suddenly. It was as if he was a goshawk, quickly rushing towards Zhao Yu's direction. Zhao Yu wanted to raise his axe to block, but he realized that Lu Xu's speed was worlds away and he was simply too slow to do anything. Lu Xu was merely a class E strength type metahuman, 
while Zhao Yu was an arrogant prodigy of Tier B aptitude back in his Daoyuan class. Even so, he was still too slow. Just as he thought that Lu Xu was going to hit him, Lu Xu had retreated, and the axe that was originally in Zhao Yu's hands had been taken away. Lu Xu laughed as he gripped the axe, do you want the gold or silver axe? From Zhao Yu's distress, plus 999. Zhao Yu almost collapsed, was it possible to be any more annoyed? He tried testing, I want my metal axe? Lu Xu stopped smiling and coldly replied, no, this is my metal axe. Damn, Zhao Yu almost couldn't breathe, what in the world was he, how can he be such an ass? From Zhao Yu's distress, plus 1000. From. The fifth star could finally be lit up and while Lu Xu was rather excited here, he never expected to gain so much distress points for this adventure in the remain. The others wallowed in fear after seeing Lu Xu's reflexes. Perhaps they would not be able to beat him even as a group. Lu Xu's very action caused the rest of them to humble down. Zhao Yu and his friends were now gripped with fear. They had seen strength type metahumans in action on the Golden Foundation's website and even received reports from their form teacher. So they knew the dangers of an awakened strength type metahuman. However, it would be hard to understand this unless you experienced it yourself firsthand in real life. So this was how it felt like to be dominated in terms of speed and strength. Most important of all, they were students who had only just completed their mysterious senses chapter, and they never even had the chance to practice a skill before. So with only the magical energy of a class E, they weren't even able to do anything else with no other skill sets learned. This was why they could not face the skeletons while Lu Xu had the strength to destroy them. Speaking of strength, they only had 2,700 pounds while in theory, a class E strength type metahuman would have 4,800 pounds. They definitely weren't of the same class. Moreover, Lu Xu had surpassed class E a long time ago. When you encounter someone despicable, but whom you still cannot beat with your best. All you can do is cry in despair. At this point in time, Lu Xu was using his distress points to fill his fifth star. It was finally enough. Lu Xu stood up to prepare to leave. He wants to find a better place within the remain to explore and search for clues. Time in the remains had already been rather long, but the relic had yet to be found by anyone. Lu Xu was someone who trusted his luck at times. What if Lu Xu himself finds it? He would then show off to Lu Xiaoyu when he gets home, I have done so and so in the remains. Everyone else was struggling in there while I was exploring it with much ease and even obtained the relic. The relic of the remain, what, you don't even know what a relic is? Let me tell you. He could almost see Lu Xiaoyu rolling her eyes at him yet still interested in his stories. He wondered if this remain contained other fruits he could bring back for Lu Xiaoyu. At the side, Zhao Yu and his group were dying of hunger. Lu Xu, on the other hand, was thinking of bringing fruits back home. Thinking of lighting up his fifth star, Lu Xu suddenly felt that Zhao Yu's group was his gold mine, and to be honest. Growing up in an era of peace, no matter how disappointing the world was, he could not let this group of people die without doing anything. What would that make him? Cold-blooded? Merciless? Indifferent towards lives? He wasn't. But he wasn't a saint either. The issue here was not preventing anyone from dying, but it was what he did or did not do. Lu Xu thought that he had his own moral compass and did not need to accept any judgment from anyone. Listen to my instructions and walk straight. You guys will find food in two days, I'll give you guys two green fruits. The eight of you will share on each day, it should be enough to last you the journey. Lu Xu placed two fruits on the floor as he finished speaking, standing up and heading towards the center of the remain. If this group of people wasted their last ounce of energy fighting for the fruits, even God would not be able to save them. Sometimes, a person's choices will determine whether or not he lives on.
What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Glass half full or empty And then we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we better 